What's Gucci everybody, it's AJ here again. I hope you're all having a great day. And in this tutorial video series, I want to talk about graphs. Graphs have been studied for over 100 years and are used a lot in computer science. And I want to make some videos to teach you guys how to use these and understand sometimes the complicated terminology that people use to describe graphs. Now we're going to start off with the definition of a graph. As you can see, I have typed it out on the screen right here. A graph is a set of vertices and a collection of edges that each connect a pair of vertices. Now you can define vertices in a lot of ways. You can define them as name of cities if you want, such as cities in the US or letters or numbers as I have here. I have them and as you can see here I have A, B, and C are my vertices are my vertices. And then edges are things that connect the pair of vertices and usually they are shown as lines. So as you can see I have an edge connecting A and C right here and I have an edge connecting C and B right here. And I also want to take special time to note that in in graphs all you care about is that the edge is that the edges and the vertices connect to the same spot so always you can always travel to the same spot. So I want to note that even though I drew these graphs differently, this a the, the one on the left side with a b b c d and the other the one on the right side, I just drew them upside down. They are exactly the same. It wouldn't matter if I drew them sideways or if I drew them, you know, upside down or anything like that. What would matter is if I had another if I switched b and d for instance. That would make them not equal graphs like that but that is but if I want them to be equal I want all the edges to be able to connect to exactly the same places also note that in my first example let me just draw it back I have D alone by itself it's not connected by any edges but that is okay this still is defined as having one graph an edge can be alone by itself that's okay kind of think of it as a city that doesn't have any you can kind of think of these as cities and d is a city on an island and i can't get to it i don't have any route to it. i don't have a boat to go over so you can think you still i still consider like this whole box the whole box is i've drawn one entire graph and graphs are equal as long as their edges and vertices connect to the same things and only connect to the exact same things and don't have any extra connections now let's move on to the next definition. Now with our definition that we just said with vertices and edges, we ena we'd enabled us to have two kind of thing um, anomalies going on, and that is self loops and parallel edges. Self loops is an edge that can is an edge that connects a vertex to itself. So a self loop is, for instance, as you can see, I have the vertex zero and I have a edge that goes from zero to zero. So that is a self edge. And now also what you see here on the right is what is called a parallel edge. It's two edges that connect the same pair of vertices. So as you can see, I have two edges that kind of do the same thing. So it's kind of like, you know, do you want to take a plane? It's kind of like, I kind of like to think of this, do you take a plane that goes, you know, halfway around the world to get from, um, you know, South America, Brazil to um, Puerto Rico? Or do you take a plane that goes straight to it, you know, the, do you, but you still get there no matter what. And maybe that wasn't the best example because it's still the same length as it may be, but there you go. You can have parallel, these are parallel edges, and what they enable you to do is, do, 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 do. Parallel edges just are two of the same connection. Note you could have more than just two parallel edges. I could have three, and then I could have four, and I could have five. I could do everything I wanted to do. Uh, let's make all that. Let's make that larger, and there you go. So, th so remember, self loops and parallel edges are possible in graphs. In some graphs, they may say they're not possible, but it is possible to see these reoccur in class and in the real world. Okay. Now, guys, we move on to definitions of paths and cycles in graphs. So these are definitions of certain things you can do in graph theory. So first, we're going to start with a path. A path is a sequence of vertices connected by edges. So simply, if I said I have a path from 0 to 1 to 2 to 5, I can do that. I can go from 0 to 1 to 2 to 5. Now, I did just draw that, but as but you can't... But 
that would be a path from 0 to 1 to 2 to 5. Now, I also can say I want a path from 0, 1 to 2 to 5 back to 0. And as you can see, I just draw a line there. So I go here, so I go here first, here, um, then there second, then here, oops, and then here again. So it takes four steps. And basically, you would say the length of this path is four because I have to cross four edges to get to where I want to be. So one, even though I have, I visit five vertices. So it would be the the vertices you visit minus one, or the number of edges you cross. Then we have a simple path and that is one with no repeated vertices. So as you can see, my 0 to 1 to 2 to 5 to 0 again would not be a simple path. I can't have any repeated vertices, and I repeat 0. So there you go. Um, 0 to 1 to 2 to 5 was a simple path. The first example I showed you, also 0 to 1 to 2 to 5 to 4 would be good, and we can add 3 in there too. And again, that would have a length of 5. Just making sure. And then now we have a cycle. As you can all see here, I wrote out the definitions on the right. A cycle is a path with at least one edge whose first vertices and last vertices are all the same. So you need at least one edge. So that means you just need you need a connection. But you also need the cycle. You do need it to come back to where it started. So, so a simple path, you can't have a repeated vertice, but a cycle requires that the, la the first and last vertices are repeating. It doesn't say anything about the middle ones, though. So let's say I start at 1, then I can go to 0, then I can go to 5, then I can go to 4, then I can go to 2, then I can go to 3, I can go back to 2, and then I can go to 1. So the path there was from, what, 1, 0, 5, 4, 2, 3, 2, 1. And note also, I, I don't have to draw a parallel edge here. I can I could take the same path. I'm allowed to reuse the vertices. So I can go I could just have drawn that one vertices and gone from two to three and reuse that vertex twice. That edge twice, not that vertex. So there you go. And a simple cycle is a cycle with no repeated edges and vertices except the beginning and ending vertices. So in a cycle I showed you that I could go to this I could visit the same vertices multiple times, but in a simple cycle I could only visit the vertex for the beginning and ending. So you can only begin you only you end where you started, but other than that you can't visit the same house twice. So let's say for example that would be going from 1 to 4 to 0 back to 1. So 1 5 4, 0, 1, and that again has a length of 4, and notice I can only visit the same vertex at the beginning and end, which I do, so I can't go back to 5, 4, 0, 1. If I want to take a detour and go to 2 or 3, that's okay as well. Now on to the next definition. The next definition we're going to look at is the connected definition, and you can say a graph is connected if there is a path from every vertex to every other vertex in the graph. So as you can see here, I drew a graph here, and let's see if it's connected. So a graph is connected if there is a path from every other vertex, from every vertex to every other vertex in the graph. And as you can see, hopefully, there is no way to get from 2 to 6 or 5 or 7 from 2. So the graph is not connected. Now, for instance, if I just drew one line from the 2 to the 6, it is possible for every single vertex in a path to reach every other vertex. Now remember, a path is just a sequence of vertices connected by edges. So it's the simplest kind of thing. So from four, I can I can from four I can reach five, six, and seven, as well as one, two, and three. And from one, as you can see, I can reach all the vertices. So that is a connected graph, is that every vertex can reach every other vertex. As you can see by disconnecting that edge, I do not have I have a disconnected graph and it is not connected. On to the next thing. Okay, next we have acyclic graphs. An acyclic graph is a graph with no simple cycles. So as you can see here, I have another graph that I didn't label any of the vertices names, but that's okay. You get the point that each of these are a different vertices. And this is an acyclic graph because I can't make any simple cycles. So I can't go back to the vertices I start at when I try to make a cycle, a simple cycle, without repeating a without repeating edges. So as you can, without repeating edges, so if I go from here to, well, I go from here, and even if I want to go back immediately, I cross the same edge, violating the same rule, and there's no way kind of, there's no way I can kind of make, get to this 
vertex, any of the vertices I started out with from another path. I need to go back the same path, thus violating the rule. So as you can see here, if I had this, it would no longer be an acyclic graph. It'd be that you'd be able to do a cycle. Acyclic graphs are known as trees. Well, it's a tree, an acyclic. A tree is an acyclic graph graph that is connected, and that is kind of what we'll get into right now. So, for instance, I could have an acyclic graph like this, but that would not be a tree. A tree is an acyclic graph. and is fully connected. So as you can see here, this is not a tree because the graph is not connected. Now if I connected these two, then it would be a, a tree. Now trees have really cool properties because they are often used, if you ever heard of a binary tree or anything like that, they all follow the same properties. Now we're going to learn about spanning trees. A spanning tree, as you can see by my definition, is a connected graph that is a subgraph that contains all of that graph's vertices and is a single tree. It still fits the rules of a tree. Now a subgraph is the, is the whole graph they were looking at, but some edges and vertices may be taken out at discretion. But a spanning tree is a connected graph that is a subgraph that contains all the graph's vertices, but it still fits a tree. Now a tree can't have a simple cycle in it. It can't have. It can only have one path to all of its um, vertices. From one vertex to another, it can only have one path or one way to get there. As you can see here, we violate this rule by having a cycle from around around, as you can see. But what we can do is we can create a spanning tree that is um, a subgraph. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a way to connect all the vertices but still be a single tree so we don't create a possible cycle. So what we can do here is, there are many ways to do this, but I'm going to use my highlighter instead. So I'm going to use that edge to get from there to there. Then I'm going to use this edge. Note that I still haven't created a cycle. Then I'm going to use this edge. Then I'm going to use this edge. And I'm not going to use that edge, the one the ones connecting it, because that would create a cycle. And I'm going to use this edge. So this way I can contain all of the graphs vertices and still create no cycles, no simple cycles, so it's still a single tree. So that's really cool. So that's what a spanning tree is. It's a subgraph that enables you to still see the tree within a, gra a, a graph that may have cycles in it, simple cycles. Well, guys, I think that's all for today. I hope you have a jolly good day and comment below and check out my website if you like and tell me if you find any errors in it. Um, that's all um, and if you have any t other tutorials you'd like to see please PM me or any projects feel free and have a great great day.